Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. Teachings that you have invested in me has produced healing and relationship with God in my life. So I'm just eternally grateful to you and to your ministry. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to teach on a better way to pray. I'm teaching on prayer. And this is a little booklet that I wrote. It's about a 60-page booklet that just is a brief summary. You know, I really felt impressed to the Lord that some people just won't go to the effort to really study something in its entirety. So this is like a free sample that will give you some of the highlights of this. And I promise you, if you ever taste this and get hold of the truths and the things that are said in here, I believe it'll make you want to get the rest of it. And so I, this is the uh, full book on a better way to pray. And uh, this is about a 200-page book. I have that in English and in Spanish. And then we have CDs, DVDs, USBs, where you get the audio and the video. But this is our total freebie to you. And I would really like to encourage you to please call or write and get that. I've already spent the first week of teaching on this just countering some of the religious misconceptions that dilute and pollute prayer. And I did that from primarily Matthew chapter 6. Jesus was the one who started that, and He said, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to pray. Then yesterday, I started countering the wrong concepts about intercession, about praying for others and specifically binding the devil. And we went to Psalms chapter 51 and showed you that an Old Testament prayer that David prayed is not a New Testament prayer. He was asking God to create in him a clean heart. If you're a New Testament saint, God did create in you a clean heart, and it doesn't become dirty if you sin. Now, that's a new concept to a lot of people, and I know that some of you may choke on that, but that is absolutely true. Your spirit does not lose its right standing with God when you sin as a New Testament Christian. And I can just hear somebody yelling, and yeah, so that now you can just go live in sin? No, because sin will still defile your body and your soul. It will give Satan an inroad into your life, and so there are still consequences, and you don't want to give Satan a free shot at you. So yes, you need to quit sinning, but you don't lose your relationship with God every time you sin. And as David prayed, in Psalms chapter 51, he says, Take not your Holy Spirit from me. God said He would never take the Holy Spirit away from us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. So for you to pray in the New Testament the way that David prayed is wrong. And you'll get wrong results if you have wrong praying. So I'm showing that there is a difference between the way intercession was done in the Old Testament and the way it's done in the New Testament. Let me use Abraham as an example. You know, I'm going to use three different examples here. I'm going to talk about uh, Abraham and the way he interceded, Moses, the way that he interceded, and I've already used David. And most people, you know, they have spiritual warfare conferences. I can guarantee you they will use these verses that I'm going to be talking about, and they will use them to say that this is how you need to pray. And yet, it's not New Testament prayer. Jesus changed everything. Jesus changed the way that we pray. We no longer have to approach God and be the one who gets Him to do something. Jesus has already provided, appropriated everything from God that you and I will ever need, and the New Testament prayer is just receiving and allowing God's goodness to flow through you to others, not begging God to pour out His goodness upon others. There's a huge difference, huge difference. So let me use this passage in Genesis chapter 18. This is where the Lord and two angels appeared unto Abraham and told him that in a year's time he was going to have a child, and it was a miraculous thing. And uh, so anyway, after he had already said these things to Abraham, then he said this in Genesis chapter 18 and in verse 17, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing that I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham 
THAT WHICH HE HAS SPOKEN UNTO HIM. AND THE LORD SAID, BECAUSE THE CRY OF SODOM AND GOMORRAH IS GREAT, AND BECAUSE THEIR SIN IS VERY GRIEVOUS, I WILL GO DOWN NOW AND SEE WHETHER THEY HAVE DONE ACCORDING TO THE CRY OF IT WHICH HAS COME UP UNTO ME, AND IF NOT, I WILL KNOW. AND SO THE LORD STAYED BEFORE ABRAHAM. YOU KNOW, WE DON'T KNOW EXACTLY WHO THIS IS. I PERSONALLY BELIEVE IT WAS A PRE-INCARNATE MANIFESTATION OF JESUS. BUT ANYWAY, IT WAS THE LORD STAYED WITH ABRAHAM, AND THEN THE TWO ANGELS WENT DOWN TO SODOM AND GOMORRAH, AND YOU CAN READ WHAT HAPPENED THERE IN GENESIS CHAPTER 19. THE PLACE WAS JUST GIVEN OVER TO HOMOSEXUALITY, AND THE HOMOSEXUALS IN SODOM AND GOMORRAH CAME AND TRIED TO HAVE SEX WITH THESE TWO ANGELS. AND BECAUSE OF IT, GOD DESTROYED SODOM AND GOMORRAH uh, WITH FIRE AND BRIMSTONE AND DESTROYED THEM ALL. PEOPLE TODAY WONDER... I'VE ACTUALLY HEARD SOME PEOPLE SAY THAT THE BIBLE IS NOT AGAINST HOMOSEXUALITY. MAN, I HAVE TO RESTRAIN MYSELF FROM COMMENTING ON SOMETHING LIKE THAT. HOW DUMB CAN YOU GET AND STILL BREATHE? THESE PEOPLE HAVE NOT READ THE BIBLE. I EVEN HAD ONE PERSON SAY ONE TIME THAT HOMOSEXUALITY, THE WORD ISN'T EVEN USED IN THE BIBLE. COULD THAT BE BECAUSE THE WORD HOMOSEXUAL WAS NEVER INVENTED AND USED UNTIL THE LATE 1800s AND THE BIBLE WAS WRITTEN IN THE 1600s AND THE OLD TESTAMENT WERE WRITTEN BEFORE THE TIME OF CHRIST? BOY, TO SAY SOMETHING LIKE THAT, JUST... YOUR your ELEVATOR DOESN'T GO ALL THE WAY TO THE TOP FLOOR. ROMANS CHAPTER 1 IS A WHOLE CHAPTER WRITTEN AGAINST HOMOSEXUALITY AND TALKING ABOUT IT'S AN ABOMINATION AND IT'S THE LAST STEP BEFORE YOU BECOME REPROBATE IN THE SIGHT OF GOD. SO ANYWAY, I'M NOT GOING TO TEACH ON THAT RIGHT NOW, BUT BECAUSE SODOM AND GOMORRAH WAS GIVEN OVER TO HOMOSEXUALITY, GOD DESTROYED THE WHOLE THING, KILLED ALL OF THE PEOPLE. TO ME, THAT IS MORE THAN ENOUGH EVIDENCE OF WHAT GOD THINKS ABOUT HOMOSEXUALITY. HE HAS NEVER MADE A PERSON A HOMOSEXUAL. YOU HAVE TO CHOOSE THAT. GOD DID NOT CREATE IT. IT'S AN ABOMINATION, AND HIS ACTIONS IN THE 19TH CHAPTER SHOWS HIS OPINION ABOUT HOMOSEXUALITY. NOW, JESUS SHOWED THAT HE LOVES EVERYONE AND THAT ANYBODY CAN RESPOND. AND HOMOSEXUALS CAN RECEIVE FORGIVENESS. I DO NOT HATE THEM. I'M NOT AGAINST THEM. BUT HOMOSEXUALITY IS WRONG AND IT IS UNGODLY. AND FOR ANY CHRISTIAN TO PROMOTE IT IS WRONG. YOU LOVE THE PEOPLE, BUT YOU HATE THE SIN. AND IT SAYS IN VERSE 22, AND THE MEN TURNED THEIR FACES FROM THENCE AND WENT TOWARDS SODOM, BUT ABRAHAM STOOD YET BEFORE THE LORD. AND ABRAHAM DREW NEAR AND SAID, WILT THOU ALSO DESTROY THE RIGHTEOUS WITH THE WICKED? PERADVENTURE THERE BE FIFTY RIGHTEOUS WITHIN THE CITY. WILT THOU ALSO DESTROY AND NOT SPARE THE PLACE FOR THE FIFTY RIGHTEOUS THAT ARE THEREIN? THAT BE FAR FROM THEE TO DO AFTER THIS MANNER TO SLAY THE RIGHTEOUS WITH THE WICKED AND THAT THE RIGHTEOUS SHOULD BE AS THE WICKED, THAT BE FAR FROM THEE. SHALL NOT THE JUDGE OF ALL THE EARTH DO RIGHT? AND THE LORD SAID, IF I FIND IN SODOM FIFTY RIGHTEOUS WITHIN THE CITY, THEN I WILL SPARE ALL THE PLACE FOR THEIR SAKE. SO HERE'S ABRAHAM INTERCEDING FOR THE PEOPLE IN SODOM AND GOMORRAH. AND BASICALLY, HE JUST SAID, IF THERE WAS FIFTY RIGHTEOUS PEOPLE, WOULDN'T YOU SPARE THE PLACE FOR FIFTY? AND HE REASONED WITH HIM AND AND THE LORD SAID, I'LL SPARE IT IF I CAN FIND 50 RIGHTEOUS PEOPLE. AND THEN IN VERSE 28, PERADVENTURE THERE SHALL LACK FIVE OF THE 50 RIGHTEOUS. WILT THOU DESTROY ALL THE CITY FOR THE LACK OF FIVE? AND HE SAID, IF I FIND THERE 40 AND FIVE, I WILL NOT DESTROY IT. AND HE SPAKE UNTO HIM YET AGAIN AND SAID, PERADVENTURE THERE SHALL BE 40 FOUND THERE. AND HE SAID, I WILL NOT DO IT FOR 40'S SAKE. AND HE SAID UNTO HIM, OH, LET NOT THE LORD BE ANGRY, AND I WILL SPEAK. PERADVENTURE THERE SHALL BE 30 BE FOUND THERE. AND HE SAID, I WILL NOT DO IT IF I FIND THIRTY THERE. AND HE SAID, BEHOLD NOW, I HAVE TAKEN UPON ME TO SPEAK UNTO THE LORD. PERADVENTURE THERE SHALL BE TWENTY FOUND THERE. AND HE SAID, I WILL NOT DESTROY IT FOR TWENTY'S SAKE. AND HE SAID, OH, LET NOT THE LORD BE ANGRY, AND I WILL SPEAK YET BUT THIS ONCE. PERADVENTURE TEN SHALL BE FOUND THERE. AND HE SAID, I WILL NOT DESTROY IT FOR TEN'S SAKE. AND THE LORD WENT HIS WAY AS SOON AS HE HAD LEFT COMMUNION WITH ABRAHAM, AND ABRAHAM RETURNED UNTO HIS PLACE. SO HERE'S ABRAHAM INTERCEDING FOR THE CITY OF SODOM AND GOMORRAH. AND YOU KNOW, OVER IN 2 PETER CHAPTER 2, IT CALLS LOT A RIGHTEOUS MAN. IT SAYS THIS RIGHTEOUS MAN IN SEEING AND HEARING ALL OF THEIR UNGODLINESS VEXED HIS RIGHTEOUS SOUL FROM DAY TO DAY. SO LOT WAS A RIGHTEOUS MAN. SO THERE WAS AT LEAST ONE RIGHTEOUS PERSON THERE. AND 
LOT WAS THERE WITH HIS WIFE. THAT'S TWO. HE HAD TWO DAUGHTERS THAT LIVED IN THE HOUSE WITH HIM. SO THAT'S FOUR. AND THEN IF YOU READ IN THE 19TH CHAPTER THAT uh, LOT WENT OUT TO HIS DAUGHTERS AND tried to, um, uh, TRIED TO GET THEM TO LEAVE SODOM WITH HIM. SO THERE WAS MULTIPLE DAUGHTERS. SO THAT BRINGS IT UP TO SIX. PLUS THEY HAD HUSBANDS. THAT BRINGS IT UP TO EIGHT. AND IF THEY HAD CHILDREN, WELL, THEN THERE WAS PROBABLY AT LEAST 10 PEOPLE THAT WERE RELATED TO uh, ABRAHAM, AND ABRAHAM JUST THOUGHT THAT IF HE COULD GET GOD TO SPARE THE PLACE FOR 10 PEOPLE THAT WERE RIGHTEOUS, SURELY THAT uh, HIS FAMILY WOULD QUALIFY, AND HE THOUGHT THAT THAT WOULD SPARE SODOM AND GOMORRAH. IT TURNED OUT THAT THE, that the GIRLS THAT LIVED IN THE CITY, THEY DIDN'T COME. THEY MOCKED HIM, AND THEN HIS WIFE CAME OUT WITH HIM, BUT SHE LONGED FOR WHAT SHE HAD IN SODOM. SHE TURNED BACK, AND GOD TURNED HER INTO A PILLAR OF SALT. AND THEN HIS TWO DAUGHTERS THAT CAME OUT WITH HIM, THEY WERE SO UNGODLY THAT THEY WOUND UP GETTING THEIR FATHER DRUNK AND COMMITTING INCEST WITH HIM AND HAD CHILDREN THROUGH INCEST WITH LOT. SO THERE WEREN'T TEN RIGHTEOUS PEOPLE IN SODOM. AND YET GOD CAME DOWN. HE STARTED AT 50 AND CAME ALL THE WAY DOWN TO 10, AND HE WAS INTERCEDING FOR THEM. Now, THE REASON I BRING THIS OUT IS TO SAY THAT YOU WILL HEAR NEW TESTAMENT PEOPLE TEACHING ON INTERCESSION, AND that's, THEY'LL USE THIS AND SAY, THIS IS WHAT WE'VE GOT TO DO, AND SAY, GOD, PLEASE SPARE AMERICA OR WHATEVER NATION IT IS THAT YOU'RE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM IN. AND THEY'LL CRY OUT, OH, GOD, PLEASE SAVE AMERICA. OH, GOD, PLEASE TURN AWAY YOUR WRATH. AND THEY ARE BEGGING GOD AND INTERCEDING FOR GOD NOT TO RELEASE HIS WRATH ON THIS NATION. DID YOU KNOW THAT EVEN THOUGH THAT WAS APPROPRIATE FOR ABRAHAM, IT'S WRONG TO PRAY THAT WAY IN THE NEW TESTAMENT? AND I KNOW SOMEBODY IS JUST TOTALLY SHOCKED AND SAYING, WHAT ARE YOU SAYING? LET ME TURN OVER AND READ THIS TO YOU OUT OF 1 TIMOTHY CHAPTER 2, VERSE 1. IT SAYS, I EXHORT THEREFORE THAT FIRST OF ALL, SUPPLICATIONS, PRAYERS, INTERCESSIONS, AND GIVING OF THANKS BE MADE FOR ALL MEN, FOR KINGS, AND FOR ALL THAT ARE IN AUTHORITY, THAT WE MAY LEAD A QUIET AND PEACEABLE LIFE IN ALL GODLINESS AND HONESTY, FOR THIS IS GOOD AND ACCEPTABLE IN THE SIGHT OF GOD OUR SAVIOR, WHO WILL HAVE ALL MEN TO BE SAVED AND TO COME TO THE KNOWLEDGE OF THE TRUTH. AND THEN IN VERSE 5, THIS IS AMAZING RIGHT HERE. IT SAYS, FOR THERE IS ONE GOD AND ONE MEDIATOR BETWEEN GOD AND MEN, THE MAN, CHRIST JESUS, WHO GAVE HIMSELF A RANSOM FOR ALL TO BE TESTIFIED IN DUE TIME, ETC. BUT IN VERSE 5, IT SAYS THERE IS ONE MEDIATOR YOU KNOW, OVER IN GALATIANS CHAPTER 3, I'll, t I'LL TURN TO THIS LATER THIS WEEK AND GO INTO GREATER DETAIL, BUT IT CALLS MOSES, IT CALLED MOSES A MEDIATOR IN GALATIANS CHAPTER 3, THAT THE LAW WAS ORDAINED BY ANGELS IN THE HAND OF A MEDIATOR. THAT'S REFERRING TO MOSES. SO MOSES WAS A MEDIATOR. A ABRAHAM, IN THE VERSES THAT I JUST READ TO YOU, HE WAS A MEDIATOR. THE WORD MEDIATOR MEANS THAT YOU STAND BETWEEN TWO PARTIES THAT ARE OPPOSED TO EACH OTHER AND YOU TRY AND RECONCILE THEM, BRING THEM BACK INTO HARMONY. SO, YOU KNOW, IF A, if a BUSINESS, IF YOU HAVE THE EMPLOYEES THAT ARE HAVING PROBLEMS WITH THE MANAGEMENT, THEY'LL also OFTEN CALL IN A MEDIATOR, AND WHAT THAT IS IS A THIRD PARTY THAT DOESN'T HAVE A DOG IN THE HUNT, DOESN'T HAVE ANYTHING TO GAIN ON EITHER SIDE. THEY'RE INDEPENDENT, THEY'RE OBJECTIVE, AND YOU WILL BRING IN A MEDIATOR THAT WILL STAND BETWEEN THE MANAGEMENT AND THE EMPLOYEES AND TRY AND HARMONIZE THEM AND BRING THEM INTO AGREEMENT. SO A MEDIATOR IS A PERSON WHO IS TRYING TO RECONCILE PARTIES THAT ARE OPPOSED TO EACH OTHER. AND IT SAYS THAT MOSES WAS A MEDIATOR IN THE OLD TESTAMENT, ABRAHAM WAS A MEDIATOR, BUT IN THE NEW TESTAMENT, IT SPECIFICALLY SAYS THERE IS ONE GOD AND ONE MEDIATOR BETWEEN GOD AND MAN, THE MAN CHRIST JESUS. IT WASN'T WRONG FOR ABRAHAM TO BE A MEDIATOR. IT WASN'T WRONG FOR MOSES TO BE A MEDIATOR BECAUSE JESUS HADN'T DIED AND HADN'T RECONCILED US TO GOD. BUT IN THE NEW TESTAMENT, AFTER THE DEATH AND THE RESURRECTION OF JESUS, IF YOU TRY AND PRAY THE WAY THAT ABRAHAM DID AND THE WAY THAT MOSES DID AND OTHERS IN THE OLD TESTAMENT, THEN YOU ARE BECOMING A MEDIATOR. AND THIS SAYS THAT THERE'S ONLY ONE MEDIATOR BETWEEN GOD AND MAN. 
IF YOU TRY AND PRAY LIKE THE OLD TESTAMENT SAINTS DID, IT WAS OKAY FOR THEM BECAUSE JESUS HADN'T COME AND there, HE HADN'T BECOME THE MEDIATOR YET. BUT IN THE NEW TESTAMENT, JESUS DID COME. JESUS DID RECONCILE US UNTO GOD, AND NOW HE IS THE ONLY MEDIATOR BETWEEN US AND GOD. AND IF YOU TRY AND PRAY THE WAY THAT THEY DID, THEN YOU ARE MAKING YOURSELF A MEDIATOR. YOU ARE ANTI-CHRIST. I DON'T MEAN THAT IN THE SENSE THAT YOU'RE OF THE DEVIL OR THAT that YOU'RE DEMONIC, BUT YOU ARE AGAINST WHAT CHRIST IS DOING. YOU ARE THINKING JESUS DIDN'T MEDIATE COMPLETELY, THAT YOU HAVE TO ADD TO IT. I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, IF JESUS HAD ALREADY PAID THE PRICE, IF HE HAD ALREADY RECONCILED US UNTO GOD, IF HE WAS ALREADY THE me the ONE MEDIATOR BETWEEN GOD AND MAN DURING THE DAYS OF ABRAHAM, DURING THE DAYS OF MOSES, THEN THOSE GUYS WOULD HAVE BEEN REBUKED FOR THE WAY THAT THEY WERE PRAYING. AND YET TODAY, THE INTERCESSOR, THE SPIRITUAL WARFARE PEOPLE PATTERN THEMSELVES AFTER THESE GUYS, AND THEY'RE PRAYING AS IF GOD IS STILL ANGRY, AS IF GOD IS ABOUT TO DESTROY US, AND THEY ARE BEGGING AN ANGRY GOD TO PLEASE NOT POUR OUT HIS WRATH AND TO HAVE MERCY ON US. THAT'S AGAINST CHRIST. YOU'RE SAYING THAT JESUS DIDN'T DO IT. YOU'VE GOT TO DO WHAT JESUS DIDN'T DO. THAT'S WRONG. YOU KNOW, THERE'S A LOT MORE I'M, I'm GOING TO SAY ABOUT THIS, BUT LET ME JUST GO BACK TO GENESIS CHAPTER 18 AND POINT THIS OUT. IF UNDER THE OLD COVENANT, IF GOD WOULD HAVE SPARED THE ENTIRE REALM OF SODOM AND GOMORRAH, AND IT TURNED OUT HE NOT ONLY DESTROYED THOSE CITIES, BUT HE DESTROYED SOME OTHER CITIES AROUND THERE. IF GOD WOULD HAVE SPARED THAT ENTIRE AREA IF THERE HAD ONLY BEEN 10 RIGHTEOUS PEOPLE IN THERE, DO YOU THINK THAT GOD IS ANY LESS PRONE TO RELEASE HIS MERCY AND GRACE TODAY THAN HE WAS UNDER THE OLD COVENANT? CERTAINLY NOT. AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THAT EVEN THOUGH I AM NOT SAYING THAT WHAT'S GOING ON IN AMERICA AND AROUND THE WORLD IN THESE OTHER COUNTRIES, I'M NOT SAYING THAT IT'S OKAY AND IT'S GOOD. I GUARANTEE YOU, AMERICA HAS BECOME WOKE TO WHERE THEY ARE PUTTING THEIR STAMP OF APPROVAL ON HOMOSEXUALITY, TRANSGENDERISM. THEY'RE MUTILATING CHILDREN'S BODIES, GIVING THEM HORMONE BLOCKERS AND SEX REASSIGNMENT SURGERY, AND ON AND ON AND ON YOU COULD GO. THAT'S JUST THE TIP OF THE ICEBERG. I'M NOT SAYING THAT AMERICA HASN'T GONE IN THE WRONG DIRECTION, BUT I AM SAYING THAT IF GOD WOULD SPARE SODOM AND GOMORRAH, THAT THEIR HOMOSEXUALITY WAS EVEN WORSE THAN WHAT WE'RE SEEING IN OUR NATION. NOT TO SAY THAT OUR NATION ISN'T BAD, BUT IT WAS EVEN WORSE HERE. AND IF GOD WOULD HAVE SPARED THEM FOR ONLY 10 RIGHTEOUS PEOPLE, WELL, CERTAINLY THERE'S MORE THAN 10 RIGHTEOUS PEOPLE IN THE UNITED STATES. DID YOU KNOW I COULD GO INTO TWO OR THREE ROOMS RIGHT HERE AND SHOW YOU SOME RIGHTEOUS PEOPLE, SOME PEOPLE THAT ARE LIVING A GODLY LIFE. IF GOD WOULD HAVE SPARED SODOM AND GOMORRAH FOR 10 RIGHTEOUS PEOPLE, HE WOULD SPARE AMERICA. THIS WHOLE CONCEPT THAT GOD IS ABOUT TO DESTROY THE UNITED STATES OR WHATEVER COUNTRY THAT YOU'RE WATCHING THIS IN BECAUSE OF OUR SINS IS A LACK OF UNDERSTANDING OF WHAT JESUS ACCOMPLISHED AT BEST, AND AT WORST, IT IS JUST TOTALLY NEGATING WHAT JESUS HAS DONE. IN A SENSE, IT IS ANTI-CHRIST. YOU'RE SAYING THAT JESUS DID NOT uh, PURCHASE US RIGHT STANDING WITH GOD. THAT'S NOT TRUE. I USED TO SAY THIS, THAT IF GOD DOESN'T JUDGE AMERICA, HE'S GOING TO HAVE TO APOLOGIZE TO SODOM AND GOMORRAH BASED ON THIS STORY RIGHT HERE. BUT YOU KNOW, NOW THAT I'VE COME TO UNDERSTAND THAT JESUS IS THE ONE MEDIATOR, AND JESUS' MEDIATION WAS SO AWESOME THAT THERE NEVER HAS TO BE ANY MORE MEDIATION. GOD RECONCILED MAN TO GOD. NOT EVERY SINGLE PERSON. YOU HAVE TO ACCEPT IT BY FAITH, BUT FOR THOSE WHO WILL ACCEPT IT BY FAITH, THE WRATH OF GOD HAS BEEN APPEASED. HE IS NOT POURING HIS WRATH OUT ON ME, AND HE'S NOT POURING HIS WRATH OUT ON AMERICA. AND I KNOW THIS GOES CONTRARY TO SO MANY PEOPLE, AND THEY SAY, MAN, THIS IS THE JUDGMENT OF GOD THAT'S CAUSING ALL OF THESE THINGS TO HAPPEN. NO, THIS IS THE FACT THAT WE HAVE TURNED AWAY FROM GOD, AND GOD HAS TO FLOW THROUGH PEOPLE. HE DOESN'T JUST SOVEREIGNLY MOVE INDEPENDENT OF PEOPLE. AND I'M TALKING ABOUT PRAYER HERE. PRAYER DOESN'T JUST RELEASE THE POWER OF GOD WITHOUT GOD HAVING SOMEONE TO FLOW THROUGH. GOD DOESN'T JUST ANSWER PRAYER SOVEREIGNLY. HE HAS TO HAVE PEOPLE THAT RISE UP AND HE FLOWS THROUGH THEM, AND THAT'S HOW A NATION IS TURNED AROUND AND AWAKENED. 
and stuff. And so it's not God who has forsaken America. It's America who has forsaken God, and we're reaping the results of it. I'm not saying that America is safe because, after all, Jesus reconciled us unto God, and God's not going to pour out His wrath on America. I'm not saying we're safe, but we're safe from God's judgment. God's not going to judge us because He judged Jesus in our place. But we are in the process of just opening our arms and welcoming the devil in, and we're promoting homosexuality, transgenderism, men competing in women's sports and saying that... On and on I could go listing things. And as a result, we are in the process of seeing this nation implode and destroy itself. Now, I believe that we are going to have a great awakening. I believe that we're already in it because God spoke that to me. I can't prove it by listening to the 10 Spies Network because I guarantee you they're reporting all of the weird perversion that's happening. But in my heart, I believe that we are going to see this nation turn around. But I am saying that God is not judging this nation. It's not God that's causing earthquakes and floods. It's not God that's causing tsunamis and hurricanes. God is not judging this nation. If God was judging this nation, I guarantee you, it wouldn't stop at the coast. It wouldn't just happen on few isolated places. Boy, when the wrath of God that's poured out in the book of Revelation is revealed, everybody's going to know it. You won't have to wonder, and He won't judge just a certain little pocket of thing, a little token judgment. No, God placed His judgment for our sins upon Jesus. I'm going to deal with that more from... Uh, John chapter 12, verse 32 this week. But God's not judging us. And if you approach God as, Oh, God, please don't judge America. Oh, God, please don't pour out your wrath. Oh, God, please have mercy. Oh, God, and you're doing all of these things that most intercessors are doing, you're anti-Christ. You're saying, Jesus didn't do it. I've got to add to it. I know that this upsets a lot of people. And I'm out of time. I'm getting close to being out of time. But you need to get this teaching that I'm offering so that you can get it in its proper balance and context. I'm not saying that America is safe. We are in the process of destroying ourselves, but it's not God that's doing it. God placed that judgment upon Jesus, and we still need to intercede. But we do it differently than it was done under the Old Testament. We don't approach an angry God as if He hasn't been appeased. Jesus appeased the wrath of God. God is not angry. God's not even in a bad mood. Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, that He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. I know that what I've said today leaves a lot of questions. Please get these materials, and just to make sure that nobody will be turned back from this, I'll give this little booklet that is a brief summary of this to any person who asks for it, absolutely free. And then my book that's a 200-page book, this is available for a gift of any amount. We won't turn you away, but we ask you to give something. It costs money to do this. I've got it in English and in Spanish. I've also got CDs, DVDs, study guides, and here's a USB that will have the uh, audio and the video on it. And I tell you, you need to get this teaching in its entirety. So please listen to our, our announcer as he gives you all of the information, and then please call or write today. Andrew is offering his booklet, A Better Way to Pray, as his free gift to you today. This booklet is available in English or Spanish and is limited to one free booklet per household. This offer is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, A Better Way to Pray, is available in a book and study guide in either English or Spanish or you can get this teaching in a newly updated CD or DVD album or as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Andrew is also offering this teaching as an audiobook on CD or it can be purchased through audible.com. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes 
and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. I want to make you aware that we have what we call our Heritage Giving Community, and this is for people who want to give an end-of-life gift to the ministry. You know, many of you have just been giving and giving, and one of the ways to give is in your will to put the ministry in there and take your assets at the end of your life and use it to promote the gospel. And so we now have this Heritage Giving Community that we have put together. And if you're interested in doing something like that, I'd encourage you to contact us. We'll have all the information on the screen. And this is just a way of you taking the blessing that God has given you and putting it to work even after it's time for you to go and be with the Lord. You'll be blessed. You were created with a purpose written in the heart of God long before you were born. He is calling you to find it. You were born for such a time as this, to be a disciple, to leave this world behind and follow Him. You were designed for a destiny, one that only you can fulfill. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. We want to help you to know God, experience His unconditional love, to be equipped and empowered to become a world changer. I want to let you know that on April the 20th through the 22nd, we got Ashley and Carly Terradez coming to our facilities in Woodland Park to hold a conference they call The Cure. I'm going to be one of the guests there, and I tell you, this is going to be powerful. It's Ashley and Carly Terradez conference, but it's at our facility. I'm speaking. I promise you it's going to be a great blessing. So remember, that's April the 20th through the 22nd at our facilities in Woodland Park, Colorado. Do you want to connect with like-minded believers? Then Karis Bible Studies is the place for you. Find a Bible study near you by visiting karisbiblestudies.net. I'm pleased to announce that we now have my television program translated into Spanish. We have a lot of my materials available in Spanish, but let your friends know that we're now broadcasting our daily program in Spanish.